Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Algoma University Thunderbirds Men's Soccer Mid-Season Review for Sioux Sports TV. My name is John Ostrowski, and let's get right into it. You know, here's a look at the OUA West table thus far, and it's really unfortunate. Those drop points against Mac, those drop points against Windsor, it's hurting the Algoma Thunderbirds right now, unfortunately, and it's going to be a battle, but they can still get into that playoff spot. You know, of course, the top six teams make the playoffs. There is going to be a bit of a battle to knock the Griffins out of that spot, though. Now that I've shown you the playoff picture and where our lads sit, here's taking a look at the good and the bad so far for the 2023 Algoma Thunderbirds. Something about this Algoma team that's been great so far is their build-up plays. They've all been very fluid. Everybody's moving as a unit. Seems like everybody knows where the, the ball is going to go next, and it's just a great thing to watch. You know, especially early on in the game, like here, this is in the 14th minute of the game. That beautiful build-up from the back, quick cross. They find that uh, left back out of position, easy goal for DePaz. That's something the Algoma Thunderbirds need to keep doing. It's working wonders for them. Another thing I love about this Algoma side is their diversity in their passing plays. They can beat you with a slow buildup. They can beat you with a bit of tiki-taka. Or as you see here, here's Jaden Timmis's long ball. That's going to eventually lead to a Waterloo foul. So that's a thing, something that you really want to watch going forward as this team gains more chemistry. And once they trust each other a bit more, it's very promising already to see the diversity in attack. And it's going to be awesome in the future. Going to the defensive side of things now, I've really loved how the back four led by Danny Sandoval, led by Luke Harrop, has been able to keep their shape all game, as well as zero in on these star players, you know, the Devin Hernandez and the Tyler Retardos of the league. And that's so beneficial for a team that doesn't score a lot of goals, being able to keep uh, great attackers and great goal scorers off the score sheet, you know, throwing two or three guys on them, making them useless. And that's just so uh, promising looking at the Algoma Thunderbirds defense going forward. And now switching focus to the things that have kind of been hurting the Algoma Thunderbirds. Uh, the big thing has been composure went up a goal. As you can see here, just a quick defensive breakdown. And that leads to an easy McMaster goal. And I, I'm not too worried about that. This is year one of Andrew Chuck's uh, crew. So that's something that comes with time, comes with knowing your pl players and playing alongside them. And that's something that's going to come with time. And once they get that first win, that second win, that third win, able to build momentum on it and learn how to play with that composure. But if you want to get in the playoffs, you really got to really got to nip that in the bud right now. So that's a little bit concerning. And it's nice to say for me, I don't have many concerns with this team. I like the direction. I think they're fun to watch. But the big concern is the fouls and the yellows and the reds. Seven bookings against Laurier in two games is unacceptable when you're in a playoff race. Dave Anderchuk knows that. He's a guy who's going to constantly be tinkering with it. And it's going to be interesting to see this last push. To see how fewer fouls they're going to give up. I do have a very special treat for everybody. I was able to uh, call Luke Hare up on Wednesday night. So here's the best bits and pieces. Uh, we had a great talk. And here we are. All right. So my name is John Ostrowski. Welcome to Sioux Sports TV. We're, uh, I'm joined here tonight with uh, Luke Harrop. Welcome to the show, Luke. Thank you very much. Pleasure. And I just wanted to ask you a few questions. I know you're a busy guy, so I won't keep you for too long. Uh, what made you want to come to the 70,000-person community up north in uh, Sioux St. Marie? And more specifically, what made you want to come to the uh, Algoma University? Um, personally for me, it was a big chance to play youth sports. Um, like for me personally, I wanted to, my goal is obviously to try to be a professional football player or soccer player, as you call it out in Canada. Mm -hmm. So the main reason I came and obviously the likes of Connor and David, who I worked with last year, I mean, yeah. Connor was a player. Um, and David obviously was the head coach in Vancouver where I was. So I think the opportunity that he brought to me seemed pretty good. So I was like, you know what, may as well bite the bullet and take it on. And I've enjoyed it so far. That's awesome to hear. Uh, Davis just seems like such a great influential coach for you guys. Oh, he certainly is. I mean, he's 
tells you how it is, and I think that's as a big trait as a coach. Yeah, we can we can definitely see even in the uh, press box that he is not a guy who's scared to use his voice at all. <laughs> Absolutely not. So, uh, you know, coming from your background, uh, I, I assume you're originally from the Leeds area? I am, yeah. Okay, so obviously that's, uh, you know, England's the inventor of modern football. So what's uh, what's the culture shock been kind of coming from that football crazy uh, lifestyle in the UK to more of a growing soccer nation in uh, Canada? Um, for me, like, I've been grown up around football since the age of four. I mean, I've been in an academy since the age of seven, so I've been in that culture from a very young age and then as soon as I got told oh you're not getting a pro contract I was like oh okay I'll go off to fend for myself now I've come to Canada you can see a little bit of a difference like there's obviously other sports that are quite big out here yeah but obviously soccer is growing um and I think for me like I want to change that persona of soccer can be the biggest sport in Canada because if not it is in the world and I think by keep grinding and showing as a collective the players we have I think we can make something happen in Canada yeah and uh, just going back to what we were talking about earlier how are you going to use that Leeds experience and that uh, you know probably more of a hardened mentality how are you going to use that in the uh, short seasons that are the Algoma soccer seasons in 2024, 2025 and going forward? Uh, the mentality aspect that you mentioned is probably the biggest thing, especially being only a 12 game season. Yeah. Like the little niggles and knocks you may pick up along the way. You've just got to think mentally, I'm strong and I've got to overcome that. And like for the last, say we play back to back games, which is, unheard of really yeah it's hard like, the last 10 minutes you've just got to give it all like when we're we've been losing the last 10 minutes and i've brought the boys in to say lads listen 10 minutes just go give it your all yeah if you go give it your all i'm proud of you and that's what i think from leeds the, the biggest thing i learned there was having a strong mentality yeah and i like to hear that that's what you want to hear from a guy wearing the armband uh that's the mentality you really need uh, if you want to lead a club. And like you said, there's no other league really in North America that does back-to-back 90-minute matches. I haven't heard of that. Yeah. Even MLS doesn't matter what level it is. They, they don't do that. No, I think you need the recovery and sadly just because of the short time frame we have. I mean, we do as much as possible as a team. Yeah. Like sometimes you wish, oh, wish I had an extra 24 hours sometimes. But yeah. That's how the cookie crumbles, sadly. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, talking about Algoma, at least talking about this year's Algoma side. What do you? What is the goal aside from sneaking into the last couple of playoff spots? Uh, what's the goal for the second half of the season for you guys? Like you mentioned, the first one is obviously trying to make playoffs. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big thing for Algoma. There's like the history. But secondly, I think the biggest one is finishing the second half of the season really strong yeah um i think that's the the main one finishing the season strong and hopefully winning because that's what the biggest thing we've been lacking recently Mm -hmm. getting off the edge so i'd probably say finishing the season strong because i think that's what the boys need well, going on to some of the negative things uh i know this team does have a bit of an aggressive nature but that's a that's a good and bad thing. I really do like the crunching tackles, and I do like it when you guys go in for those big tackles. But sometimes that leads to early bookings, and that was the issue against York. So, what has Andrew Chuck done to pre- try and prevent those situations going forward? It's a tough question, that because as a team like myself and Jaden and Daniel, we've all implemented an aggressive nature because that's what you, you need if you want a team to come up to the Sioux after that long bus journey you want to be aggressive and I think David from coach uh, sorry has uh, probably just said be a little bit smarter and when you do the fouls because we're giving a lot of fouls around our 18 yard box yeah. 
So I think potentially just being a little bit smarter and little, how do I put it? I think we've just got to be a bit smarter on how we tackle, I'd say. Because there's a way of going into a tackle and costing a foul, but there's a way of going into a tackle and coming out cleanly with it as well. I think that's what Dave's biggest point has come across. Just be a little bit smarter on how you approach the game. Yeah, and I think that's something that just comes with time, just playing with you guys. Once you play one, two, three years, you have the luxury of everyone pretty much being a first and second year. You have that time to grow. And, uh, you know, I just want to say thanks once again, Luke. I really appreciate you coming on and uh, answering a few questions for me. I know it's pretty late. You probably had a pretty busy day with training and uh, school, but I just want to say I appreciate it again, man. I appreciate it for having me. Thank you All very right. much. All right. Take care, brother. Take care. Look after yourself. Appreciate it. Go up the T-Birds, eh? Yeah, up the T-Birds. <laughs> <laughs> My closing thoughts for today, I think that you shouldn't really dwell if this season doesn't go to fruition, if we don't make the playoffs. You can't dwell on that so much. The team has a great direction. You've had opportunities to win. You didn't capitalize on them. That's ball. That happens. But Dave Andrzejczyk's the right man for the job. There's no doubt about it. He's an inspiring guy to watch. He's a fiery guy on this pitch. You see him on the sidelines with his hands up. He loves Algoma. He loves Thunderbird soccer. You want to grow with this guy. And speaking of growth, you talk about that potential back four once Setters gets healthy. Hair up Setters, Sandoval, Timmis. That has the potential to be the best defensive core, not only in Ontario, but in Canada. Those are four guys who are world-class soccer players playing for Algoma. And once they learn how to play with one another three, four years down the road, it, it might be over for the rest of the country. But the issue is they need that final goal-scoring touch. It might be Yoshi. It might be DePaz. they got to find a guy who can really be that Erling Holland type, just able to put in the ball. So those are my closing thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. My name is John Ostrowski for Sioux Sports TV. Always remember, up the T-Birds.